Welcome to this breakout session in which we want to think about what regulatory reporting can learn from the sharing economy. The sharing economy is often referred to as a buzzword. Today, we hope to fill it with life. To be specific, we elaborated an idea on how to help transform the reporting world towards sharing. This idea draws from concepts known from the field of so-called cooperative game theory, which is, as we think, perfectly tailored to the inevitable challenges that are associated with this endeavor. The aim of this breakout session is to propose something that can deal as a first landmark, something that can provide orientation during further discussions within the market. So you could ask, where is the pain? Why has the market to move at all? Well, many reporting agents require a similar outcome. Nevertheless, we often see that regulatory reporting results have low quality while causing high costs. This has been a frequent complaint on last year's RegTech conventions. In principle, any reporting factory that realizes synergies within a network of reporting agents helps to overcome this issue. Within the Bearing Point RegTech factory, um, there's already an offering that allows to share IT infrastructures and operative processes. However, the following proposal of a joint reporting factory or shared reporting factory based on principles from cooperative game theory goes one step further. It would allow banks to harness the fruits of synergies or economies of share, as we will call them later on, in a transparent way. Why is transparency important? Well, we see that network buildings often fails due to disagreement on governance and distribution issues. A transparent and fair pricing would tackle these issues and enable further cooperation. The method we propose later allows for a fair solution for all network participants. This is because clients strictly pay according to their own contribution to being of value in reducing the joint costs of the entire network. First of all, let us define what we are talking about, a sharing economy. Next, we will show why this definition will apply to a reporting factory that is structured as a sharing platform. As cooperation is the precondition of sharing, we will look into the challenges that a platform setup has to tackle. We spotted the so-called Shapley solution as a promising concept on how to distribute the fruits of sharing, which could help to overcome obstacles. Finally, you may ask whether a transformation towards a shared factory really is a feasible option. There are many diverse, sometimes conflicting opinions about what to understand when speaking of a sharing economy. Sharing is caring. So is sharing something compatible with receiving payments in return? We adopt a perspective that does not need to answer this question and arrive at a general abstract core principle that seem to hold with all understandings of a sharing economy. The least controversial point with sharing is that you need a place to do it, some sort of platform which is backed by peers. Let us think of a platform where you can share tools. Peer A is the owner of a ranch. He only needs to use half of the time he is laboring in his workshop, let's say in the morning hours. In the other half of the day, he would need a hammer. On a sharing platform, he can manage to rent or borrow this hammer from peer B, who is owning one but does not use it during the morning hours, as she then typically requires a wrench. So both peers agree on the platform to switch their own resources temporarily. This way, each of them is able to increase the utilization of the tool owned by himself full exploiting its capacity while avoiding having to buy the other tool. We all agree that this is a general phenomenon of exploiting synergies. 
Inspired by the terms economies of scale and scope, these synergies achieved on a sharing platform can be called economies of share. The more peers enter the platform, the more sharing opportunities there are. This can be valuable to peer A and B as, for example, they might change their daily routine. So peer A might have to use the strength himself during the afternoon when usually peer B required it. A new peer C offering a wrench could then step in and provide the tool to peer B. Increasing the amount of sharing participants will push the attraction of the sharing platform in the future. Then we see accelerating sharing opportunities induced by so-called network effects, which are inherent to platforms. Let us abstract what we have learned about the nature of a sharing economy. Sharing basically means granting access to something without having to redistribute ownership of it. This way, sharing can be discriminated from ordinary renting or borrowing transactions because it takes place on a platform that helps to orchestrate transactions among peers. These peers offer own resources on the platform. Platforms inevitably come with network effects. Such network effects are positive externalities as people unintendedly do other good out of performing according to their self-interest. So the more demand of sharing increases, the better for the demand side on the platform, as this increased demand attracts more and more suppliers to the platform. Therefore, in the long run, sharing opportunities do not be plead with more demand. This means that sharing creates rents that are not rivalrous, as everybody profits. As we could, in theory, exclude peers from the platform, we see that sharing typically creates so-called club club goods that are consumed by forms of collaborative consumption. Does this definition also help to explain widely known car sharing offers organized by car manufacturers? Yes, if you slightly adjust your expectations about the term peer resources. Many of you think about the car being the resource that is shared but you could also regard your individual contribution to the joint demand of the car as a resource supplied to others because only with a significant amount of other co-users in your area will you be able to enjoy the services provided by the car owner who would never locate sufficient cars in your neighborhood unless he could be assured a minimum degree of utilization only if you adopt this small twist in perspective, you will agree that we really talk about a sharing economy when we see many reporting agents agree to a joint factory to produce their reportings. Imagine many reporting banks would bundle the provision of those technical services on a joint platform that are inevitable inputs when producing reports. By each peer entering the club of participants, the joint bargaining power would increase such that more favorable software fees or licenses could be negotiated. Thereby, average fixed costs go down for all participants. These cost reductions are a club good because they only come about when banks cooperate and they will not decrease with more participants joining. Likewise, we would see an increase in the utilization of operational units that administer technical systems with each participant entering the factory as, for example, new releases can be rolled out more standardized and a higher degree of specialization among staff can be reached. The resource that a member of the factory club owns and shares with the other participants clearly is the additional unit of potential synergy that will only get realized within the club. This is also applicable to hardware capacity that could be utilized more evenly and balanced 
hence to a higher degree, within clusters of distributed computing or when processing times are orchestrated by a central body. However, we do not only see synergy potential with technical reporting services, but also in the realm of solving functional reporting tasks. For example, banks with same products, input data models or core banking systems could jointly implement the adjustments that come with a newly introduced reporting. Then each factory participant shares the opportunity to further reduce average costs by solving a task valuable to many with single effort. This all sounds too good to be true. There has to be a limitation that hinders the market to cooperate. Well, in every aspect of society, we see that it gets more difficult to agree to common rules when the set of decision makers and discussions increases. As the fruits of cooperation grow with more participants, so do the general negotiation costs. Also, prevalent conflicts are more likely to break out with more and more heterogeneous actors entering the discussion. Therefore, in order to achieve agreement to robust factory governance structures, we would already need an efficient set of rules governing the negotiation itself. With reporting, we face some specific hurdles that make managers abstain from negotiating corporations. For one part, we see operative units performing in the mode of a constant stress test that does not leave room for thinking about ways to improve or taking the necessary steps to do so. Also, reporting is not structured in a way to serve internal services, but rather perceived as a pure cost item without any long-term benefit. Therefore, institutes might try to achieve quick wins while shying away from long-term investments. For another part, managers might perceive their banking operations is so special due to specific constellations and workarounds that they do not see room for synergies with others. Additionally, some managers and staff might fear devaluation of their expertise once their institution cooperates with others. Finally, outsourcing is always a delicate topic, as is also the coordination with other branches and internal stakeholders, which is typically typical for globally operating banking groups. A special difficulty to any joint reporting factory is that it will serve as a platform that provides the sharing governance. Therefore, it must state how the economies of share, the fruits of the corporation, are distributed among factory participants. This is where cooperative game theory can play its strengths. So why is cooperative game theory appropriate to provide us with valuable advice? Well, different to the non-cooperative branch, which is more prominent in public awareness, cooperative game theory does not look at situations where several actors freely choose their strategies towards each, each other, um, which will then result in a self-enforced equilibrium behavior. Rather, the cooperative branch assumes a situation where actors Will be, part of a binding of, will be part of binding contracts that allocate a common resource among a contract coalition. Any contractual allocation will be then the result of a solution approach that fulfills certain axioms or criteria that might be considered reasonable to some part. One specific solution concept was proposed by Lloyd Chapley who received the Nobel Memorial Prize in Economic Sciences in 2012. The main idea behind the solution of Shapley um, is that the distributed individual payoffs should reflect the value the recipient has as being a valuable coalition partner. And you are a valuable coalition partner in case you add something extra to the joint payoffs of the coalition. We will show in a minute how the Shapley value works and how it is calculated. 
before we can actually apply the concept to the reporting factory, however, we have to agree um, on some terms and definitions. Reporting item is a necessary input in order to hand in a valid report. This can be, for example, including all types of banking products, accounts and balance sheets, items, adapting the chosen regulatory methods, timely processing of data volumes, operation of technical systems, delivering a degree of data quality that avoids serious validation errors and the like. Whenever at least two reporting agents exhibit an item that is equal in its characteristics, for example, standard products or standard core systems that enable an identical mapping logic, we are able to economize on inputs and label the reporting item to be homogeneous. Next, we will see that a synergy matrix will state for each possible subset and combination of participants how many homogeneous items can be realized with a single spending. The Chevrolet value will be computed as an average value for each participant. It averages over all marginal contributions the single agent adds to the synergy matrix payoffs of each possible coalition among participants. The individual contribution each factory participant will have to pay for the pre provision of homogeneous items will be, will be relative to the share of an agent's own Shapley value in the sum of all participants' Shapley values. We call this the Shapley share, and it, 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 and it has uh, to be multiplied with factory outlays to arrive at the individual price tag for homogeneous items. Let us have a look at an example. We see three banks who opted to cooperate on a shared factory platform based on our Shapley inspired approach. Within the status quo, each member to the factory requires four to eight reporting items for which he has to spend on providing the respective input. The utility the bank receives from reporting is being granted a banking license by the supervisor. Simple bank and small bank have many products in common, apply the same methods, maybe share the same core banking systems, which allows for a joint mapping of data towards the Abacus 360 data model in case of regulatory updates. Small banks has slightly more, small bank has slightly more sophisticated products as it wants to offer a wider range of products compared to simple bank. Therefore, item E is not homogeneous, but the other items between small and simple bank are. Complex bank in turn, uh, complex bank in turn holds many complex derivatives, a trading book and only few simple products. Therefore, it has only two homogeneous items in common with the other two factory members. The factory produces the full set of reporting items for all banks. However, only four of them are homogeneous. For these four items, A, B, C, D, the factory only uses a single spending. For example, let A be the administration of technical systems necessary to process the reporting. Whether Supervising the processing of either one or three reportings has no impact on the costs as they are more or less fixed. Without a factory, each bank would have to spend on this item separately. With a factory, however, factory members can share a single spending among themselves. This way, resources worth two items A are set free. These two items are synergies. The synergy matrix keeps record of all possible synergies among banks. While small and simple bank have ABCD in common, complex and simple bank could jointly only generate two synergy items. The banks are now discussing the governance and pricing setup of their factory and notice the six synergy units they may distribute among themselves in case the factory goes live. Complex bank suggests to equally share the fruits of their cooperation. However, the other two banks notice that this would leave each of them with two items. These two items could be also realized when small and simple bank agree 
to a smaller factory tailored to their needs. Much easier to govern than a factory club where also the wishes of a complex bank have to be considered. So a complex bank is an unfavorable bargaining position and might have to agree to receive less from the joint realized synergies in order to be part of the factory club. This is basically the idea behind the Shapley value. The distribution of corporation gains must be according to the bargaining power of a club member. In our case, it is a bank's potential to realize synergies with others. The following computation of the Shapley value is not complex. It is just setting up a matrix like the one at the right hand side that lists all possible combinations of negotiation outcomes, coalitions, so to say, that jointly set up a factory. We have n faculty combinations of who is going to join a factory of three. Either it's first A claiming it will definitely be part of the factory, and then B joining A, which makes C move and agree to be part as well, as we see it in the first line. Or we could imagine that C is following the offer of A, which then makes B joining the club, as in the second line. The Chapley value is computed by looking at the incremental value each participant adds to the coalition of those who already agree to cooperate. Such marginal contribution to the joint pay to the joint coalition is then summed over all possible constellations of how coalitions can come into being. This sum is then divided by the amount of possible coalitions such that we arrive at the average contribution of a single participant to the overall factory payoff. So here we see that complex bank will not be able to save a payback of two synergies but only 1.3, as this better reflects its value as a coalition member and hence his negotiation power. We can compute the fair individual share in all gains and costs of the factory as the ratio of the individual Shapley value to the sum of all coalition members' Shapley values. Mm, let us have a look at the pricing of homogeneous items now that are produced by the factory. By multiplying the Shapley share to the factory expenses on homogeneous items, we arrive at an individual expense contribution. The total individual factory pr price will also include a small margin that goes to the factory. The status quo price, in terms of reporting items, is much higher as we see. Transforming this price in terms of reporting items um, in euros will result in a similar effect. Each factory member will notice that it participates in cost cuttings and knows exactly how his own expense contributions come about. What about the non-homogeneous items? Well, they could be produced by the factory, but at individual billings that are not related to the Shapley approach, as respective cost reductions do not result from the sharing of peer resources, the synergies. Let us have a look at the overall outcome of the factory. In the status quo, banks spend 17 reporting items as inputs to reporting. With the factory, however, they only have to spend 11 plus a small margin they pay to the factory, which reduces the member's overall positive return to a minor extent. Overall, factory members end up with a 30% return compared to the status quo that is distributed according to their Shapley share. This figure shows how the individual contributions of each bank is split between spendings on homogeneous items and individual reporting items. Having a closer look at the returns um, and contributions of small bank, we see that it saves the equivalence of roughly two reporting items. And 1.6 reporting items are paid on homogeneous items. A margin contribution of 0.3 items is paid and Finally, one reporting item 
equivalent for a non-homogeneous bank-specific reporting item. The total price is substantially below the initial spendings. The governance structure of the factory as a sharing platform makes this result possible. You may ask yourself why the factory margin is not calculated based on realized cost reductions, but based on total expenses. Well, the answer is simple it would not be feasible it would not be feasible to calculate um, based on realized cost reductions as this would demand that participants report their ex ante factory spendings per homogeneous reporting item as we see participants always have an incentive not to truthfully report their status quo spendings but to underestimate them which would then diminish the factory margin. Starting from the expenses, however, it's fair as they are relative to the effort of the factory. At the same time, the factory knows that it is under pressure to perform as there is a competition among possible factories. Only the factory that achieves the greatest amount of synergies and smallest cost will survive in the long run. Additionally, expenses could be disclosed to a supervision board that includes members. As already mentioned, the Shapley solution fulfills a specific set of axioms. The most important is Pareto efficiency, which ensures that all gains on the table are distributed. This axiom ensures that all market participants could unite under a common factory in principle. Antitrust agencies will, however, not have to worry about witnessing the cradle of a monopoly as any factory will start in a competitive setup where other actors may decide to enter the market for factories as well. Also, in case we would see a single factory in the end, this would be a two-sided monopoly where not only supply, so the factory platform, but also demand is represented by a single party. So the club of factory members. In such a setting, participating banks are ultimately connected and therefore have a strong negotiation power. They can credibly threat to jointly leave the factory in case it performs badly in realizing synergies at low cost. Also, the additivity axiom enables the factory members in principle to exclude a set of services from an initial factory and outsource it to another specialized factory. If the latter factory was also governed by our Shapley pricing approach, additivity would ensure that adding up the members' returns across both factories would result in the same value that is reached within the single factory. The symmetry axiom ensures fairness in the respect that members with the same value to the factory have to pay the same price and therefore participate equally in the synergy returns of homogeneous items. Rewriting is not possible because members without any contribution to the joint synergies will not profit from them. The other side of the medal is that nobody has to contribute to costs that he does not to take an advantage from. Finally, the Shapley approach puts the joint factory under a pressure to perform because it is only rational not to form other coalitions outside the factory in case the factory operation manages to strictly realize econo economies of scale at increasing member size. This is due to the fact that the Shapley solution is only stable in so-called convex sets. You may might say now, well done, nice theory, but this is simply not working. Whether the approach can be implemented fully depends on whether the factory and its members can agree on an items catalog from which homogeneous items can be identified such that we can calculate the synergies matrix. Meaningful items catalog will include all cost drivers of reporting. Abacus users already have a shared language that enables to report the product 
and methods dimension of cost drivers. This language is the Abacus data model, which includes many fields that categorize products and methods. Reporting processing time schedules will be crucial for realizing synergies in the utilization of hardware capacity. Whenever a reporting agent allows to process his, his reports within time slots where other usually are not heavily using machines, this will represent a synergy potential. We are convinced that realizing a joint factory will not come as a single event like launching a rocket uh, where you pull the lever and then enjoy a glass of champagne. It's not easy as that. Rather, launching a shared factory that enables banks to participate in the economies of share will be a stepwise process. For example, we might think of a factory that starts with a limited set of participants that can easily discover their, their synergy potential at a limited set of services, for example, in the area of technical operation, where low-hanging fruits can easily be harvested. Then such a factory could increase stepwise in a linear fashion both the number of factory participants and the amount of services covered by factory production. Another possibility would be that market members favor an approach that starts again with a restricted set of services, but focuses on integrating more participants to the factory before cooperation is rolled out to other service areas. Finally, we might see many shared factories evolving in parallel, each adopting an approach that best suits its members' profile. In any case, the first step will always be to envisage the factory's governance setup. In this breakout session, we propose one out of many possible solutions on how to approach the pricing challenge. The key message of this talk is that there are solutions like Treplu-based pricing, which the market can use as a starting point in the discussion, a discussion that the Bering Point Rec Tech factory team is prepared to accompany. And the opportunities are plentiful, that's for sure. Thank you for your patience and please reach out to the context provided in case you want to join the discussion. Thank you.